what's up pickle peeps and welcome to day nine of the world domination marketing plan okay so yesterday i came in and i'm pretty sure i said that i wasn't sure that it was going to work phase two we are currently today was supposed to be launch of phase two of the marketing plan which is the mifki the most incredible free gift ever and Yesterday, I was like, well, it might happen, it might not, and I have progress and halting news on it. So, straight up in the beginning of all of this, I said, with this crazy plan that I conceived here, if only 50% of it got done, we would still make tons of money. It would still have a fantastic holiday season for us. Our customers would be able to enjoy so many deals and so many bargains and so many great things coming out. We're going to pull all the different marketing levers that we have <laughs> in our arsenal and it was going to be awesome. Well, remember I said 50% of it to work. Remember, anything you do when we make plans, not wish lists, plans, actionable things, you're probably not going to be able to take action on all of it. And this is the first spot where I failed. And hopefully... Fingers crossed, it's not quite a failure, it's just going to be a rearranging. So phase two is Mifki, and phase three we go into on Sunday. Phase three is a one-day event, <laughs> is Sunday, and then phase four is Monday. So there was a very small window to put phase two in, and now i got to look around and see where I can rearrange and put it in somewhere else for the Mifki. Um, but I want to come in and talk to you just a little bit about that. Well, first, let's get the numbers. So the numbers for tracking emails, I have no clue. Um, I think it's zero goose eggs, but I don't really know how many people join my list today. I have not checked that one today. Today is a bit crazy. That's all right. Money, we made $12.50. Hey, it's above zero. I'll take it for right now. So this morning was like a mega, mega struggle with all the frustrations yesterday on trying to get orders out and then the Veterans Day thing. And by the way, happy Veterans Day um, to all who serve. Thank you so much. This country wouldn't exist without you. So going on from that, um, I really like was angry at myself that I couldn't seem to put together this Mifki when I have all the training, I have all the outlines, it's literally like fill in the blank. And have you ever been in a situation where you're like beating at something and beating at something and beating at something and beating at something and you're like, this should make sense. This should be pretty easy. Like I'm a smart person. This should be easy. Right. And for some reason, you just can't get your own head out of your way to get it done. So that's what I have been dealing with, with the Mifki since mm, October. <laughs> so like I knew what I wanted to do. I knew for the most part what I wanted the big vision to look like. I was starting to narrow what kind of what I wanted the smaller vision to look like. Um, but I couldn't commit it down to paper to make like a true actionable plan until this morning. Because I went in and I talked to my coach who had a group session this morning. And, like, I was really bummed because going in, I know on Friday, this is not really a coaching session. This is more, like, community wins, community help, and all of that. It's like, I always want to bring a tip or something to that community. I am I am chasing that 266 member of the month um, award. That totally doesn't exist, but we laugh that I should get it. So <laughs> I want to keep to that standard. Um, but I was really bummed because... Like, what was the win? And I was so focused on this Mifki here that's like that I'm not launching. And I told everyone I was launching today. Like, all my coaches, all my friends, all that. It's like, they knew I was launching today. My customers didn't know. That's okay. Because I wasn't sure it was going to happen. So that's why I didn't tell my customers on that one. Um, and it was weird because as I was sitting there and I was thinking about it, I was like, oh my god. So the big win of the week is the collection launch. Like that happened. That worked. That is a mega, mega win. And completely mentally, emotionally, everything overshadowed by the Mifki fail. So always remember that like the actions are 50-50 of winning and losing, um, but our emotional perception of them, <laughs> the thoughts we tell ourselves about them, we put, tend to put more weight and connotation behind the fails than we do the wins. And that's something it's a mental trap to watch out for. So anyway, like all this struggle, all this like, ugh. And he, so my coach asks, like, what are people having problems with? And I'm like, getting this damn Mifki done and dealing with perfectionism, because I know that is at the root of everything. What I'm fighting against is perfectionism. And like, ugh. he came in, and he did a review. Now, he taught the same thing he taught last week. To people who have coaches and you get annoyed if they keep telling you the th same thing after same thing after same thing, the reason they're telling you the same thing again and again and again is because you're not actually doing it. And we know as coaches, and they know, <laughs> that it's just a matter of repetition. We're going to keep saying it 
And eventually, it's actually going to sink in that this is something you should do. I have witnessed it myself. I've gone through it myself. I have witnessed it with my students. I have seen it with other people. And it's like, you've been telling me this for a year and I haven't done it yet. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. No, it's not that. It's just you were finally in the spot to hear it. But anyway, so he goes through it and he's talking with other people. And I sit down. Oh, well, I am sitting at my desk anyway. And I write out this. Yeah, you don't need the top part, you just need this section right here, which in the most bare bones, simplified manner is my Mifki plan. So I told you the Mifki leads to a subscription box, right? So I'm gonna have an Aries of the Month Club. I'm gonna have three tiers of it for a monthly rate, a quarterly rate, and an annual rate with different savings on there. In the subscription box, like this is all the stuff like I laid it out. They're going to get a pair of earrings. They're going to get a confidence quote card. They're going to get a sticker. And then I'm going to have bonuses like um, discounts to my website, uh, VIP access to the trunk shows, that kind of stuff. I'm going to put it in a small flat box. So we have perceived extra value on there. I was researching on Amazon for a little bit today to buy like just what's a sample run of 25 or 30 boxes to see what works. Like not going all in. Not going all in on purchasing, but going all in on having a concept, on having a prototype. So that's that part. And then on the Mifki, I already knew it's going to be my wings of fire necklace because it's got a cool story behind it um, or addition to it. And they're also going to get in the Mifki the VIP early access to trunk shows and the golden ticket, which is a coupon. Um, then I'm going to bump it for matching earrings to the necklace. And then I'm going to have an upsell, an OTO one. Uh, which is um, one of my other best-selling sets, which is going to be a um, bullet key necklace and matching earrings. We can get the necklace, the earrings, or both. <laughs> so that is, boom, phase one Mifki plan. And because it is concrete, it is specific. I know exactly which products are going into it. I know exactly what I need to source for printers, what I need to source for supplies, what I need to do for all of that. Like, I can move forward and take massive and perfect action on this plan. So for what is it today november 11th <laughs> since the beginning of or probably second since the second week of october october 7th or 8th like i knew i wanted a jewelry club at that point i knew i wanted an earrings i um i was gonna do big box and i phased it down to an earrings a month to start with um but from then so pretty much about a month like i've been beating my head against a wall on trying to get that simple thing I just told you down on paper to know exactly what I wanted it to look like. And you beat on the wall, you beat on the wall, and you beat on the wall, and eventually you reach this, um, my one friend who is a mindset coach, she's actually running a challenge next week, a free challenge called Break Through the Suck, um, which is all about mindset and limiting beliefs and knocking through those to um, like optimize yourself, be your best self. I love that. I love limiting beliefs. I love busting them because I never even know that I have them until like they're pointed out. Yeah, anyway, sorry stuff. I'll link her um, group down below if you're interested in joining. It's a completely free challenge. I'll be in there, whatever. Um, shoot. Yeah, so... I was meeting with her, I was talking with Paige, and she was telling me, I was explaining this process that I kind of go through, where, and I, I've seen it many, many times in my life, where I will procrastinate something so much until the absolute last deadline minute. It happened the first time I did a summit interview. And um, not that I was interviewing people for me, like the first time I was ever, I was interviewed and I was on a guest on someone else's. And like, I couldn't put the slide together, I couldn't put it together. I knew what I was talking about, but I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head. Like anytime I sat down, it was just like the, the blank white wall, the curse, uh, the, the blanking cursor syndrome, like all that stuff happened. I couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. The morning of the interview, I have like two, three hours here. I wake up with this like resolve burning somewhere in between my heart and my gut, somewhere in the middle of there. It's just like, Ugh, we're doing this. That's it. There's no choice. We have procrastinated ourselves to a corner. We're done. We're doing it. And I see this happen a lot in myself. I don't know if it's ever happened to you guys. And I thought I was weird with this, but Paige was saying that this is called the point of no return. She goes, you're just really good at handling the point of no return. And um, I was like, oh, cool. I like that. I like that. In my head, when I'm facing uncomfortable things, like outside your comfort zone, <laughs> I've told you guys before that my brain works in movie quotes and Lego pieces. Not that I ever actually play with Legos, but that's a story for another time. Uh, that's how my brain works. And so anytime I am like stepping out of my comfort zone and I try to push myself a lot out of there, um, 
I get, <laughs> I get this little snippet movie scene from Lord of the Rings, and it's in uh, Return of the King, where Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas are going into the City of the Dead. And, like, Gimli is scared, and Legolas is scared, and everyone, they're all scared. But Aragorn goes, and he, like, just charges into the cavern. Not charge, but, like, purposefully march. And he goes, I do not fear death. And, like, any time I am facing that exterior, um, like, this is not... I don't know if this is quite me, this is not my comfort zone, this is none of that. Every single time that's like, okay, just that same, like, purposeful, not 